Hi and welcome to Be a Stock Studio. Today we are a bit crowded because we are joined by the biotech company Synact Pharma, who is here to tell us some big news. We have Jeppe Olofsson, CEO of the company, and we have Thomas Jonasen, who is CSO of the company, and we also have Chairman Torbjörn Bjerke. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And you are here because you have just announced that Torbjörn will be taking over as CEO of the company and also that the nomination committee will propose the board member Uli Haxel as new chairman. So I'm going to start by asking you, Torbjörn, and there's a lot going on for the company right now and you're waiting for important data. Why is this a good time to do this big switch? Yeah, thank you very much, Nicolina. So, uh, first of all, there's no drama behind this or this, uh, this decision. Uh, Jeppe, Thomas, uh, me, as well as uh, Thomas Boulsen, our C, uh, Chief Operating Officer, has been working uh, for more than uh, 20 years together. We have built three companies. The first one was Action Pharma, that was uh, eventually sold to, to Abbott. Then we built TXP Pharma, that is a part of Synact Pharma in a enlarged pipeline, and then uh, Synact Pharma here. So, uh, and we have had different roles. Uh, in these companies. So uh, Jeppe has been the CEO and also the CFO of companies. Thomas here has always been the chief scientific officer and the brain uh, behind the development of the different compounds that gives us the value we have today. And I have been the, uh, the uh, uh, chairman often. So uh, Synact Pharma is in an extremely exciting period now. We are awaiting for the, uh, the results from Expand and uh, Resolve. Um, and we are uh, preparing for an extended amount of, uh, of um, uh, uh, business development talks with potential partners. And then after we have been discussing this, uh, who, who would be uh, the best uh, person uh, to take over and, and lead the company through this uh, period of time, then uh, the, the choice uh, became me. And I'm so exciting to, excited to take over there. We, we need to remember that under Yeppe's leadership, we, uh, we developed the company from a private, tiny, small company into a company on the uh, NASDAQ uh, mid-cap section. Uh, so that's an impressive amount of development that has been going on for quite a short period of time. And Thomas here being the brain behind AP1189, that could revolutionize the way we treat uh, inflammatory diseases is, uh, is just, you know, we are really looking forward to, to the results coming uh, uh, in the second half of this year. And I'm curious, Jeppe, you have been building this company for the last nine years. Why is this a good time for you to step down? No, I think it's a, it's a perfect timing. Uh, I've been in the chair of uh, being a CEO for, for nine years. And I, for some time, uh, wanted to move a little bit away from operation, more into the strategic part. And also being an entrepreneur, uh, you know, to work with, with earlier stage companies. So, you know, to be able to hand over uh, uh, the position here to, uh, to Torbjörn, uh, knowing him for, for 20 years uh, makes me extremely comfortable. In terms of the timing, I think uh, the timing is good. Uh, the company is in, in ship shape. We have, uh, you know, programs on time. We have money in the bank. We have completed the uplisting and, you know, done the TXP acquisition. So I think the timing uh, is good. And I think that the company is well positioned for going into business development uh, activities the rest of this year and for the next year. And, you know, Torbjörn is, uh, is an expert in that area. So uh, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's the right step. Uh, and I was actually the one recommending it in the first place. So for me, it's an easy one. I see. And as I understand it, you will remain a long-term shareholder. Why is that important to you? Yeah, it's important. You know, we have been shareholders for, for a long time. Uh, we have been buying shares in every round, basically. And uh, we haven't sold a single share. So uh, we, are, we are committed to the long run here. And uh, we will remain shareholders uh, and, and, of course, uh, really believe in, in, in the idea and the compounds that uh, we have under management. 
I see. And Torbjörn, when you are stepping down as chairman, uh, Uli Haxell will be nominated to take your spot. Could you tell us anything else about what's going on, on in the board? Yeah, so, so, so we are happy that uh, Uli will, will take the chair. And why is that? Uh, he has an enormous amount of experience uh, from, from both Big Pharma, but uh, very much also from how to build a, uh, a successful uh, biotech company. Uh, he was uh, one of the early, early persons in Acadia Pharmaceuticals, a US-based company, where he uh, led the company through being a private uh, company uh, until to be a, uh, becoming a, um, a multi-billion uh, uh, US dollar uh, Nasdaq-based company. So he has been through all the development phases uh, and he's strong both in, in terms of the pipeline, he's strong in, in business development and in general management. Um, and he has a great network. So, so we are really happy that he can, he can take over as a chairman. Another uh, change that is important, I think, for, for Sunact Pharma is that uh, Thomas von Koch come in as a, as a new board member or he will be proposed for being a new board member. And that's very important. When I leave the board uh, and he comes in, we, we still have the, 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 the great knowledge within uh, how to, to build a, a company. You probably know that he's, uh, he's a co-founder of EQT. He has been sitting in and making decisions in many companies, uh, successful companies being, uh, being developed. So, so this is a, a big add-on to, to the rest of the board members, which I believe are, you know, top-notch uh, people to help us uh, uh, further build uh, the company to the next inflation point. And Thomas, I wanted to ask you, as we heard before, you are expecting important data later this year. But could you tell us overall what's the status of the company and what we can expect from you going forward? We are currently uh, developing uh, our lead compound, AP1189, in, uh, in two phase two studies in rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and we are on track and we are on time and we expect to have high level, uh, have the data in the second half of the year. In, in, in addition to these pro program, we have now uh, uh, broadened up the pipeline with the TXP programs that was uh, acquired here uh, early in the year. And um, we look very much forward to bring uh, the lead compound uh, TXP from that, uh, from that group of compounds to, to first in man uh, by the end of the year. Um, and give us opportunity to go beyond what we can with 1189 as we can address, uh, address uh, in hospital setting with, with, uh, with organ protection. Uh, and we will, of course, update the market later on uh, the year of, 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 of progress in that program. Overall, uh, the aim or the uh, where we differ, uh, where we are very different from other companies is that we are addressing autoimmune and inflammatory diseases by resolution therapy, pharmacological resolution, meaning that we uh, that we modulate the in inflammatory system, system rather than block it. For years of decades, the, the main ambition has been to either block specific block, uh, specific pathway in inflammatory responses, or it has been to, to give more broad-based anti-inflammatory compounds, like, for example, the JAK inhibitors, or uh, in, in many ways even have to make some kind of, of a real immune suppression uh, in order to control the, the often very uh, serious inflammatory uh, state of, of organ or tissue in these diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis. What we are doing is very, very different. As we, as I said, it's resolution, meaning that we cannot uh, take out the immune system, but we can modulate it. We have uh, a certain level of anti-inflammatory effect of our compound. But in addition to that, we stimulate pathways that is, is help clearing up the inflammation and thereby bringing the tissue or the organ back to normal hom homeostasis without immunosuppression. And that's really a complete new way of doing things. And, and that's why it's so exciting uh, times this. We got fantastic data in the begin study that we reported in December 2021. And we, based on that, we set two development paths up in rheumatoid arthritis. We continue first line treatment in severe patients who are referred to rheumatologists uh, to, to rheumatologist for treatment, where standard therapy, therapy is metotrexate, a compound that is, that works well 
but it has a lot of side effects. And, and, and when I say work well, yes, it worked well in approximately half of the patients. In the rest of the patients, you eventually have to go to a second line treatment or even third line treatment. And in many cases, you need to, to give glucocorticoids on top of that to control diseases in, in the first months of, of treatment. That is where we are testing the continuation of our begin study in our expand study. Three months dosing um, with the compound and, with look and, and, and then we will get the data in the second half and we look very much forward to that. Then in addition to that, we have now uh, a, a program in, in DMARC IR patients, meaning patients who have been through at least three months treatment and still have uncontrolled disease activity. Uh, many of these patients will be treated with glucocorticoids in order to, to suppress the immune system, but still have, have uh, cry, rather, rather uh, severe symptoms. These patients, uh, we have set up a development program. That is uh, the RESOLVE study. It's two parts. First, a dose, re a dose response. Uh, if look at efficacy on, on short term, four weeks as we did in the begin. And then we also have the approval to continue in a 12 week study with the relevant doses as a phase 2B that in the best case on back on good results in the second half of this year could be initiated uh, uh, late this year, early next year. Very, very important for that is that also from, uh, from, 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 from that perspective is that this program is run under an US IND, meaning that it's a program that we have discussed and agreed with the FDA on development path. And we got that clearance of the uh, IND in the autumn and then we set up the study and now we are running full speed. May I just add on to that question? Of course. Okay, so let, let, if, if you stand outside the company and look into it, uh, Thomas mentioned all the activities that we're doing now. It's so impressive. It's so impressive to be able to, to run two uh, uh, phase two studies at the same time. And, uh, you know, when you look at the IND, the uh, US regulatory authority is okay that we can run studies in, in the US. You know, when we got feedback from, from them, it was like one liner, yes, start. And that is very impressive. Uh, I've done drug development for 30 years, and to get an IND is, is quite uh, is quite troublesome. Uh, but uh, Thomas and his group uh, made this uh, um, very efficient. So the other point I want to to say is the business development part, uh, because we are doing these studies now, uh, two different group of patients. We see a, a huge market potential in both of them. However, uh, Big Pharma and, uh, and other potential partners, they wanted to see 12 weeks. They said fantastic results after four weeks in the beginning, but we want to see 12 weeks in order to see more safety, more efficacy. Uh, in addition to that, ah, it would be great to see if uh, AP1189 works in uh, DMARC IR, those that have got metrotrexate, but it doesn't work anymore. So what do you add? So with AP1189, we have the opportunity actually to both uh, treat uh, severe patients and newly diagnosed, uh, and hopefully also to treat then uh, the second line, which is the biggest market opportunity uh, in RA. So when we get these results, we believe in AP1189. If we can show that with good data, we have such a nice ground to go to the, uh, the potential partners and even enlarge the number of potential partners with, with the results and have good discussions. I will, as, as the new CEO, I will participate in every one of these discussions. So this will be exciting. And would you say, is business development your top priority or what can we expect when you take over later this year? When we look at my top priorities, uh, uh, becoming uh, the new CEO, um, it is definitely business development is uh, priority uh, number one. Uh, but also, as, as I started to talk about, you know, uh, uh, we need to communicate more. We need to uh, be able to uh, to talk to uh, uh, stakeholders uh, both in Sweden as well as uh, outside Sweden in order to to them to to know Sunak Pharma better and the fantastic potential we have. As uh, as Thomas said, we are 
the leading company within inflammation resolution, which is a totally new field. It's a very intelligent way of, um, of treating inflammatory diseases. So, and, and that is when we talk to potential partners, this is really something that they, um, they become interested in. Um, in addition to that, then with the acquisition of TXP Pharma, uh, we have a broad pipeline where we can attack the, the inflammation in different ways. Uh, now we are going for a, uh, a, a broad, uh, a very common, you know, 1% of the people in the world do have rheumatoid arthritis, right? Uh, and uh, about half of them cannot really be treated. So this is a big potential. However, we also see a number of great potentials in other diseases that where AP1189 and the rest of our pipeline uh, could uh, could become really really interesting to to test in. So so now I believe that we are we are the leading company within this field, and that's a very very good platform to uh, uh, to uh, to work uh, work further on. And that brings us to my last question. I was going to ask all three of you, where do you see the company in one to two years? Let's start with Jeppe. Well, I see that we are at that time well positioned in the stock market. Um, I see also uh, Sunakt having a, some sort of a partnership uh, agreement on our lead project and that we have the financial background to really advance the TXP compounds uh, and the pipeline uh, further on. So, uh, yeah, bright looking future. And Thomas? Uh, yeah, um, if, 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 if I stick to the development, uh, well, we will have the uh, we will have the second part of the results study up running, uh, following uh, good results in the autumn. We will have the um, we will have the TXP uh, program uh, advanced to a stage where we have initiated phase one, uh, meaning safety uh, safety data in, in healthy volunteers. So um, have data from all the other. Uh, Discovery projects we have running uh, that we can share with. So, so that's really what I look forward. And then, of course, have got this. Uh, the data in the autumn will give this uh, really help to to further uh, to further boost the uh, the announcement of resolution therapy as another way of addressing the diseases in mind. I see. And Torbjorn, do you want to end? Yeah. So, so I see us uh, hopefully uh, creating a lot of value. Uh, because we have the building blocks to be able to do so, I believe. That's also why, why we are here and why we are, we are developing Sunak Pharma. We very much believe in this. And I, I, I see us having established us as the company to, to treat uh, inflammatory diseases in a new way that is not immunosuppressive, and that where you can really get a uh, fantastic uh, beneficial effect for patients. So for patients, a new treatment option uh, for shareholders, uh, more value. I see. It will be interesting to follow this further. Now we know a little bit more about Synect Pharma and the management change over there. Thank you so much for watching this interview and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.